Hello. So today is day two of Hurricane Preparations 2019. So the update for today now is that the hurricane is now projected or expected to become a Category 4 hurricane before making landfall. Okay, I'm just going to be honest. <laughs> now I'm nervous. I'm pretty scared about that. My first hurricane, and I'm a little nervous to begin with, but I know what kind of damage a Cat 4 can do. I've seen it. Not firsthand, but I've seen it. And with still so much uncertainty and so much time for this thing to be sitting out there in the Atlantic, you know, it's, it's stalled out or whatever, it's going very slow. So it's still got a lot of time to sit out there on that warm water. Um, and it could probably potentially even be a Cat 5 before it's all said and done. I don't know. <sighs> Just know this is a little unnerving. So I did a little more preparations today. Yesterday I filled up the car, or almost filled up the car, and um, so today they're telling everyone to plan for power outages and to make sure that you've got like um, seven days worth of non-perishable food. So I pulled everything out of my pantry. I'm not sure that I have seven days worth of food, even just for one person. So I may have to go tomorrow and get a few other things or just some kind of things. Some cereal bars, granola bars, something. I don't know. I have a feeling tomorrow is going to be the worst day to go shopping. And I probably should have already done this. But it is what it is. I haven't gone yet and I need to go. So, hopefully it doesn't come to that, but, you know, it may, who knows. Anyway, so I talked to my regional coordinator with the Red Cross today. And I feel a lot better about that. Um, tentatively, to begin with, as the storm is moving in, since I work from home anyway, I'm just going to be coordinating phone calls from home to start out with. I'm going to be, you know, just making sure people are where they need to be, making sure uh, resources are getting allocated to the places that they need to be allocated to, and just, just kind of work with some of the logistics part of it. And um, so that's what I'll be doing tentatively. To begin with, um, obviously, if conditions deteriorate and it becomes unsafe for me to stay home or I have a loss of power or there's like potential for like some serious flooding, I will be going to the shelter. Um, she said she really wanted me at the shelter since I do have experience and I worked at the Red Cross shelter during Hurricane Irma in 2017, but since I work from home, and I work for a hospital, and hospitals, you know, they don't close for holidays, and they do not close for natural disasters, so it's not like a lot of businesses in this area will be closing down once the storm starts moving in. Obviously, my job will not, so I have to stay close to home, and do my job so tentatively she's gonna have me working from here so i was looking today at some of the risk potential that i may have because uh, i was trying to figure out like i'm trying to like really get an idea of my true flood risk so i was doing some math Okay, and I am, from where I live, see so I am, I don't know if you can get this, I'm the blue dot, you can see the blue dot, I'm the blue dot. So I am 20 miles 
from where I sit, 20 miles to Fort Myers Beach. So that's the ocean, the Gulf of Mexico. My concern is the Caloosahatchee River is just right up the road. It's 5.3 miles from me. So it's like, I'm the blue dot, this is the river. You can see that. Okay, so I feel like if there's going to be some serious potential for flooding, that river is probably going to be my biggest threat. Now, immediate flooding, when you go out my building here, like you go out my door and you take a right, right behind my building, which is in the center of my apartment complex, we have this beautiful, if you can see it in there, oh, well, let me try this again, um, like a five, five acre, I'm not even sure how many acres, it is a stocked fishing pond, they call it a lake, but you know, I'm from North Georgia, come on, this is a pond, um, this water right here in this little area, it's like a little beachy sand area where they have these little chairs set up. Now, a couple of weeks ago, we had a lot of rain, like every day, rain, 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 a good bit of rain. And the water was up into the sand and we really had fish literally swimming in front of these chairs. So... That's a potential for some flooding right there, but that river is really my biggest threat. I'm not that concerned about storm surge this far inland. I'm 20 miles from Fort Myers Beach because if the storm is coming in on the Atlantic side, the storm moves across the state, it's going to be pushing the water away. So. I'm on the Gulf of Mexico side, so it's going to be pushing the water away from the, my coast. So it's just mainly going to be the rain, the wind, and then the potential for this river flooding. That's my biggest concern, really, is being five miles from this Caloosahatchee River. Normally, ever since I've lived here for a year, my favorite thing to do is <laughs> drive downtown go to the river district it's like i love being down there at the river today i'm like scared to freaking death of that river because i know that river is my biggest threat right now so again i've assembled all my little non-perishable food together and made me like a little stockpile of the food that i've got in case of the weather or the power going out and i've packed every box, every empty box that I had could get my hands on. So I got no more packing to do tonight. So the main thing I'm going to do tonight, other than just keep monitoring the weather channel, which there probably won't be a lot of uh, updates tonight, I imagine in the morning, there's going to be some more significant updates. But the biggest thing I'm going to be working on tonight is this right here. If you can see this. I have my Volunteer Connections account pulled up with the Red Cross and I'm just going to be working on finishing up my training classes that my regional coordinator wants me to do. Some of them I hadn't taken yet, some of them I took up in Georgia when I first joined the Red Cross and she just kind of wanted me to, because I've had like the in-class classes on some of them and she wanted me to just do the online portion of some of them that I hadn't, that I did field classes just to kind of do a refresher because Hurricane Irma was two years ago. So it's been two years since I worked in a shelter. So she just kind of wanted me to, you know, kind of refresh myself, which is fine. And that'll give me something to do tonight and something to keep my mind off of a lot of things. So I'll be kind of like that whole like nervous anticipation. So doing these disaster classes is going to constantly be my driving in my head like, oh yeah, I am preparing for a disaster here. I mean, you can't get around that. So 
So that's it for today. We are gearing up for a potential category four hurricane to make landfall in Florida. And if it's a cat four, the whole state's probably gonna get some kind of impact from it. Um, I know Governor DeSantis has declared a state of emergency for the whole state. So we are in a state of emergency, but as of right now, there are no evacuations been ordered, not voluntary or mandatory. So I imagine that that's probably gonna change tomorrow. Honestly, if they're really looking at this to be a cat four, I think tomorrow they're definitely gonna at least start with some voluntary um, evacuations, at least on that eastern side, anywhere from like Miami up to Jacksonville. I don't know, because at this point they still really don't know where the storm's gonna make landfall. And it could even still go up into Georgia, so who knows? They don't know, I don't know. We're just still watching it day by day, but so today we have some food prepped and I have my plan together with the Red Cross, which is tentatively working from home, unless it becomes too safe, and then I go to the shelter. The only problem with that is that they're setting up three shelters around here in Southwest Florida that are in my area, and the closest one is gonna be 20 miles from me. So it's 20 miles, so if, if it comes to having to go to a shelter, that's a decision that I'm gonna to have to make pretty much in advance because, you know, 20 miles is a, is a little way to go to be driving in a hurricane, making landfall. So, <sighs> this is very unnerving. It's my very first time, but, and I'm learning a lot as I go, but it's just, honestly, it's just gonna be a day by day, but tomorrow, I have a feeling, because now they're saying this could even like be like late Monday into Tuesday before it even makes landfall. They don't know. There's still so many variables into this. <sighs> just a day by day. Just wait and see. So for today, the thing is, I got some food together to prep, to set aside that I will not need or that I will not eat or use in the event that in, over the weekend we lose power. I'm going to hold on to that and I'm just going to do some training for the Red Cross and get myself ready to help them out any way that I can, however is needed, when the storm hits. So that's it for today and well, I guess we will check in tomorrow and see what the status is tomorrow. So they're telling everyone to have enough non-perishable food to last for seven days in the event of losing power. So I tore out everything in my pantry other than a couple of packs of crackers. All I found that I have is this, these power-ups, uh, some tomato soup. I got this super huge jar of peanut butter, a packet of tuna, a granola bar some cans of tuna. I found some cans of corn, tomato, and black beans, so I figured I could make like some kind of like mock taco soup, like some kind of Mexican soup. The problem that I figured out with these is since I was already working on packing up my house to get ready to move at the end of my lease, and I'm the only one here right now, I decided to pack up everything that I thought that I wasn't going to need between now and October. And I've packed up my manual can opener. So it's here in a box. And the good thing is all of my boxes are labeled, but I'm just gonna have to bust open every box that says kitchen until I find the can opener if we lose power and I need it. And then I have a just about a half a loaf of bread and a pack of these uh, protein drinks. So that is the only non-perishable food that I have other than some crackers. So without power, this is what I have here. And then I think I'm okay 
on waters. I have like like a whole case of waters there and then a bunch of these uh, bigger like they're kind of a uh, sparkling water but um, they're like 33 ounces and I have like I don't know it looks like about 10 of those so I'm good I got juice milk of course my eggs and my frozen waffles so I guess I'm gonna have to go to the store tomorrow and get some more food tomorrow's probably gonna be the worst day to try to get to the store though <sighs> so I don't know I really truly don't know